Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. All right, Savage, off. Brian Sussman in. Always a pleasure, always an honor to get behind this microphone. You know that. It goes without saying. Savage, of course, been working hard all week. Gets the nice three-day weekend that he deserves. 855-400-SAVAGE is the phone number. 855-400-7282. Savage Nation. He'll be back on Monday, of course. Check michaelsavage.com for all the latest headlines. That's where I've been going for my show prep. You could also pre-order the new book, God, Faith, and Reason. We'll talk about that later in the program. That's available November 14th. I have a copy right next to me as I speak. Also... Catch Dr. Savage this Saturday. He's going to be talking about the new book on TBN, the Trinity Broadcasting Network, with Mike Huckabee. Huckabee's got a really good show on that. Well, so Huckabee is a big personality. He's a great personality and a very, very likable guy. And he's got a great show on TBN, 8 o'clock Eastern tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern. And uh, they replay it. I th- they replay it on Sunday. So anyway, tbn.org for programming notes there. My jaw. So I'm doing my morning show in San Francisco on KSFO. That's Michael's flagship station. That's where I mean, he, he started it all back in the 90s. I was simply a listener and a big fan back then. Borders, language, culture. That's what he was all about. So I'm on the radio this morning, getting ready to conclude the broadcast, and then all of a sudden, you know, out of nowhere, flash news comes across. Bo Bergdahl, no prison time? Are you kidding me? Are you flipping kidding? This is just, my jaw dropped, as did yours. So I'm not telling you anything new. I'm just telling you the news. I mean... Let's, this was a think about this. This 2014, my gosh, it's been a few years. 2014 prisoner swap. Do you remember this? Bergdahl and the five Taliban kingpins held at Guantanamo Bay. This was all political. All this was about Barack Obama and his desire to empty out Gitmo, and his ridiculous, sorry, treasonous campaign promise to the far left. And by the way, in my opinion. This was totally illegal. He bypassed Congress. Five Taliban kingpins, worst in the world, dangerous, malevolent terrorists. Oh, and then National Security Advisor Susan Rice assuring the public, Bergdahl served with distinction. Remember, there was even that weird, bizarre White House ceremony with his strange hippie parents from Idaho who went on to express odd ideas about solidarity with their son and the the dad had grown this Taliban-like beard and he was speaking in another language. It was bizarre. The Bergdahl affair. And now the guy walks. I get it. Dishonorable discharge. Big. Did this guy, you know what? In another day and age, he would have been executed. No time in prison. Boy, tell that to the moms and dads and brothers and sisters and perhaps spouses of the guys that were killed in action looking for him. This is just so disturbing. So disturbing. Unbelievable. Ah, that's that's a huge story. That's a huge story. (laughs) You know, here's just uh, one more on this really quick. And uh, I know you'll want to comment on that, but there's a lot of other news we'll talk about. This isn't going to be all, all bag on Bergd all day. We're, we're, we'll move on to other stuff. But I just have to tell you, I have a very good friend. He's a, a listener out in San Francisco to the Savage Nation. He's a listener to my morning program. He's a Bay Area guy. He used to be an, an intelligent, intelligence officer at Gitmo. We call him Gitmo Jim when he calls in. And I know the guy's legit because I was so intrigued by him. I, uh, I met with him a few times. I said, I, I want to know who this guy is. Let's set up a meeting. So I met with him a few times. But he was telling me he was coming back into the country from Africa. So he was totally out of the news cycle. He's in the Atlanta airport. 
and uh, CNN is on every channel, every TV, I should say, in uh, the airport. And he's he's seeing these five guys. And <laughs> he, he sees them and he's going, what? What is 0592 and 38469 and 4 for FD? He only knew them by their numbers. He didn't even know their names. He's seeing them on the screen. These were the Gitmo Taliban kingpins, those guys. And he's going like, what in the, what are they doing on TV? Did they kill somebody? What happened? And, and so he gets near a TV monitor so he can listen in to what Wolf Blitzer or whoever's talking about. And he realizes these guys have been traded for a prisoner of war held by the Taliban. His jaw dropped. He knew these men. He had interrogated them. He knew they were as bad, as bad, as bad could be. And he could not believe for a moment that they were going to be released from Gitmo because he knew in his mind they're going to go back to the battlefield. These are sworn soldiers of Allah. Are you kidding me? Oh, man, the pain. Oh, the pain. Then the other story, I'm sure you've heard about this, but it's a local story because I'm out here in the Silicon Valley. This is with Twitter. So Twitter launches an investigation. Yeah, right. So yesterday evening, suddenly it becomes apparent to the, uh, the, the world of Twitter that Donald Trump's Twitter feed's been cut off. It's been, it's suspended. It's gone. It lasted 11 minutes. So uh, apparently what happened, you know, the Silicon Valley, I mean, it's just loaded with all these uber libs. I mean, they just live in this bubble. This fantasy bubble, they're Trump wasted. We're part of the resist movement. If you're working at Twitter and, and you happen to uh, be a listener of the Savage Nation, you, you keep it under wraps. You just don't say anything. You just you just shut up and do your job and collect your paycheck and go home. So some guy, some guy is on his, yesterday's his last day. His last day. And this had to be coordinated with other people because this guy supposedly worked in customer service. Last day, he uh, somehow gets to flip the switch to turn off Trump's account. And I'm sure it was high fives. Everybody's laughing. They're probably laughing all the way up the food chain. Everybody there thought it was probably a riot. Absolute riot. But they launched an internal investigation after a customer support employee reportedly working on his last day with the company deactivated the highly viewed account of President Donald Trump. We're conducting a full internal review. In fact, I'm looking at the uh, tweet. Earlier today, that real Donald Trump's account was inadvertently deactivated due to human error by a Twitter employee. The account was down for 11 minutes and has since been restored. We're continuing to investigate and are taking steps to prevent this from happening again. Yeah, right. They're all laughing, high fives, probably went to the bar after work to celebrate. <laughs> human error is what they first blamed it on. But then two hours later... Uh, they said the deactivation was done by a Twitter customer support employee who was on uh, working his last day. Um, my guess is it was somebody in some, there was probably some computer program who said, hey, Frankie, it's your last day, huh? You're in customer service? Come on, come over here. It's your last day, right? Tell you what, you didn't hear this from me, but if you push this button right here, we can deactivate um, a guy with... Uh, orange hair's account. Okay, just go ahead. Just push it, push it. Okay. Hey! Glad to have been working with you, fella. This is such a joke. Twitter's in the news, by the way. Twitter's totally in the news. Um, Biden's out there. Joe Biden. Oh, what a joke this guy is. Mr. Gaftastic. Mr. Gaftastic uh, says Trump's tweeting is childish. Also, John McCain. John McCain. John McCain and Biden, by the way, are good buddies. But a lot of people don't know this. John McCain and Joe Biden are really good buddies proving that McCain is, is hardly, hardly one of us. Uh, but McCain is also popping off to Trump. Stop tweeting. Stop, stop attacking Republicans. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, we'll, we'll get into this. I mean, when it comes to Biden's gaffes, I've got, I've got them memorized. They should, they should not even, these are guys that shouldn't go out in public, let alone publicly criticizing somebody like Donald Trump, because they've been known for opening mouth inserting floor shine for the longest time. And we'll talk about that this morning. Or this after, We'll talk about this on The Savage Nation. Also, we've got Pocahontas in the news. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren. Oh, gosh. 
Are there any jokes about, uh, you know, so this fake Indian walks into a bar. Are there any jokes like that? Can somebody finish that one for me? Finish it in a way that would actually work on the Savage Nation without getting the license pulled. So this fake Indian walks into a bar, you know, kind of like horse walks into a bar. Hey, fella, why the long face? You know, that kind of a thing. That's something we'll talk about. Um, it's, it's amazing. There's a new study out saying that major news organizations like, for example, oh, I don't know, the Washington Post and CBS used tweets from fake Russian accounts in their news coverage. They got duped by the Russians. I love this. I love this. And by the way, this, it's a little, it was, it was put out by Politico. I don't know anybody else covered this. But in terms of the you know, Russian influence on the election and the meddling on the election, what they were doing was trying to sow seeds of doubt into the Trump presidency. In other words, after he won the presidency, that's when they were starting to use social media to make people not want to support Donald Trump. Nobody talks about that either. Oh, we got so much stuff we're going to get to on the Savage Nation. Plus, of course, your calls eight five five four hundred savage um, And then the religion of peace back in the news. Not that it ever leaves the news. But how could 700 Islamic scholars be wrong? I mean, these are 700 scholars. This is the creme de la creme of Islam. The creme de la creme. These are the, the experts in the law. The experts in the history, 700, have come from all over the world to Beirut, Lebanon this week. And you know what their goal is? The destruction of Israel. How could so many be wrong? Oh, my gosh. So we got lots going on. Brian Sussman here. Always a pleasure to sit behind the microphone on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Brian Sussman filling in here on the Savage Nation. Michael's off. I'm at michaelsavage.com right now. Article entitled, First Look at God, Faith, and Reason. There's Savage at his desk. Oh, this is kind of an inside look into one of his studios. I like this. It's pretty cool. He's got a, he's got a nice setup. I'm liking that. He's got a Savage Nation hat on. I'm pretty sure Trump copied the hat from Savage. It's The style is very similar. Nice, nice. Okay, you can pre-order God, Faith, and Reason at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the usual places. It's officially out on the 14th, 14th, and then he's going to be on the tube with Mike Huckabee. Check tbn.org for all the listings there. It's right on their front page. You'll see it all uh, very well. So let's see. In the new, there was another story on michaelsavage.com that got my attention. Oh, this is the Prince, yeah, the Prince Harry story. This is good. So was it Prince, Prince Harry, Prince William? One of the princes. One of the princes. We'll talk about this in just a moment. He's another one of these uberly wealthy kids who says there's too many people on the planet. Uh, we were all really, really sad and troubled, hurt by what went down in New York City. And then we find out that this killer, this terrorist, this Muslim terrorist, is uh, a, a product of the diversity lottery program, which is just insanity. That's so insane. That's ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Um, to think that basically, you know, Bangladesh, I think it's Bangladesh. Bangladesh actually took everybody in their phone book and put every name into the lottery just to see, you know, hey, who will make it? So stupid. Give, give, me, give us your best and brightest, people that can really contribute and want to bleed red, white, and blue. But I'm thinking of that with this, this terrorist. I mean... The guy comes here from Uzbekistan, right, five years ago. Chain migration brings 23 people with him overall over five years. First settles in Ohio. Ohio doesn't work for him. Then he goes to Florida. That doesn't work for him. Settles in Patterson, New Jersey. Large, large Muslim population. And by the way, just to 
irritate those on the left. Yes, there really were people cheering in Patterson on 9-11. That's, that's verified. May not have been thousands, but there were people cheering. Uh, there were thousands of the Palestinian territories. I remember seeing the video of that, handing out candy, all that kind of garbage. But uh, bottom line is, this guy comes over here, diversity lottery program, settles in. I, I don't understand. You know, there are many Muslims who have come to this country and they want to be Americans. They they want to be a part of the experience. Uh, they, they, they want to contribute. They want to assimilate. Generally, these are people who were born into the religion. They come here for a better life and they, they want to contribute. But then there are sadly many others, like this guy from Uzbekistan. They have no, they're not interested in being American as you know it. They're not interested in bleeding red, white, and blue. They look at that American flag and it turns their stomach. So I'm just asking this question, and they come in on this diversity lottery program. And the vetting is obviously so drecky. But the bottom line is there are 57 other countries where you would think they might be a little more at home because there are people of their kind there. Why did they want to come here? Well, you can fill in the blank yourself on that. Kenny's calling WABC. Kenny, you're in New York. What's the what's the mood there? What can you tell me as I'm on the opposite coast? If you let me stay on for three hours, I can give you the pulse of the whole city. This is the bottom line here, Brian. We've invited the world into, into America. New York City, people should know, parts of it has become an Islamic city. Most of the country does not know that. We've invited the world here, and what they've done now is they've come in here, we've been hospital, we've been generous, and now they're rearranging the furniture in our home. That's exactly what they're doing here. People have to realize there are people in this country, they couldn't care less what happened Tuesday down in Lower Manhattan. They want this country flooded. That is their agenda. They are never going to close up, bring up the draw bl- uh, uh, the. Uh, draw a bridge and stop this mass immigration to America. There is no assimilation. I'll bring it to New York City. There is no assimilation. This is basically what's taking place now is the destruction of Western civilization. I will tell you, a month ago, the animal bombed Chelsea last year. He was convicted. This animal, and let's give a kudos to the police officer who hit him. He was aiming for center mass. He did the correct shot. But I was hoping that he would have blew off this animal's head because eventually... Kenny, Kenny, I'm hearing you. What you've said, you've said well. We've got to take a break, as you can hear. But there will be more. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. Us been filling in for Dr. Savage on this, the Savage Nation. I understand we, we have a house call. We have a house call right now. Is there a certain doctor in the house who's calling into his own program? Is that what I understand? Well, I thought it would have a day without adrenaline, but uh, here we are. Here we are, Brian. You're doing a great job. I happened to tune in just before the break, and I thought I would... Um impose upon you on my own show. <laughs> I'm up there. You're going to be on Huckabee's show this weekend. I want to make sure people are aware of that he has a wonderful program on TBN. Just go to tbn.org for all the details. But this will be a tomorrow when they replay it on Sunday. And uh, Huckabee's a good man. I think this is going to be a tremendous interview about the new book, God, Faith, and Reason. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I only booked it yesterday. They only got to me yesterday, which is kind of a rush. They wanted me to go to Nashville in one day. Now, I would love to go to Nashville because I'm a country music lover. But I said, hey, guys, I need a little more than, you know, short notice. So we're going to tape tonight in San Francisco right near KSFO Studios. And okay. it'll broadcast Saturday and Sunday night on his new show. And I like Mike. I always have liked the man. You know why? He's down to earth. He's honest. Wouldn't it yes. be great if he was in the White House somewhere in some major cabinet position? Yes. He, he is a good, honest guy. Well, I don't know him personally, but, you know, he's, um, he's there, he's real, and he's the antithesis of San Francisco. What could be better? <laughs> so you'll be talking about the new book. Michael, I have the book. I'm reading. This is, it, this is an enjoyable read. I'm taking my time. I did not know what to expect, I will tell you. You, you told me 
long before you, months and months ago, that you were thinking about writing this book, and then we'd hear you talk about it on your own program. But it's a very enjoyable read. It's thoughtful. And uh, you're telling us a lot about you, the kind of stuff that we've never heard before. It's wonderful. What it is, it's not a preachy book. The things they say, God book, oh, please, I don't want to read that preachy garbage. Leave me alone. I don't believe in God. Or, and if I do, it's my business. That's not what it's about. No. Faith and reason is one man's odyssey. I've been searching for uh, the, the proof that God exists everywhere I turn since I've been a little boy. There's a story, little stories in the book, going back, boy, boy chasing, I forget, boy in the street, boy, ch- boy on thin ice, I don't remember. It's about a little five-year-old boy in the Bronx, New York, who sees a Jewish newspaper in the streets, running down the streets, blowing in the wind, all these sheets of paper. He doesn't know what it says. He doesn't read the language, but he thinks it's a religious script that's been blowing in the wind. So this kid runs down the street, gathers up all the sheets of newspapers, brings them to a bundle to his mother and says, Mom, 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 look what I, look what I saved in the street. And she smiles, pats him on and said, It's okay, son. She said, It's just a newspaper. And, of course, the little kid is crestfallen. He thought he had saved a, a religious text that had been <laughs> blowing it. So what I'm saying is from the time I've been a little kid, I've always been there, one way or the other. And God knows I am such an unper- imperfect man. I mean, the liberals know that, of course. They're all perfect. I'm not. I'll admit it. But the thing is, is that I am looking. So where do I find this invisible entity? Do I find this entity in Grace Cathedral? Yes. Have I seen this entity in a synagogue? Occasionally. Have I seen this entity when I've been with Buddhists? Have I seen this entity when I've been living in Fiji in the dark of night drinking kava kava in the 1960s? Yes. Where is God? God is everywhere. The point is, is that God is invisible for a reason. This is my greatest discovery in my whole life. It was my eureka moment. I hate to go on and on about it, but I've gotten so excited. Here it is. If God was visible to us, see, God is invisible, right? We all know that. Like, we always say, God this, God that, where are you? Oh, God, where art thou, right? Mm -hmm, We mm -hmm. We don't touch him. We don't worship idols. The idol worshipers worship mud. They worship feathers. They have crystals. They have... uh, Dream catchers hanging from their, from their mirror. To them, that's idol worship. They need something tangible to hold on to, as did the ancient Israelites, and God punished them for being idol worshipers. So our invisible God, God, set it up that we can't see him for a reason, Brian. And the reason is this, is that if we saw him, it would be like yesterday's movie. Oh, that was a great movie. What's on tonight? We would dismiss him immediately. Yeah, I saw him. He wasn't that interesting. But did you see what's on TV tonight? So God, so God, God makes it so we can't see him, so we keep looking for him. And, in keep, and by, by continuously looking for him, that is the success. That is the finding. That is my uh, theory of relativity with regard to theology. You know, the one thing that's really fun about this book, it's a, it's a book that's going to last a long time in terms of his message. You could even say it's timeless. Some of the stories are a page long. Some of them are many pages long. But you get into some very, very personal stuff. For example, I mean, one of the stories is entitled Your Father's Death. Oh, God. Uh, You're really opening up your heart. And uh, this is a side of Savage that I don't think we've seen before. Yeah, I don't want to get into that one. It's too painful. Everyone loses their parents. If they're lucky, it's not the other way around. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but if we don't feel it, then what's the point of living? And sadness is just the other side of the other coin, you know, of the coin. But I know what you're talking, God and man. I see that section that's full of, uh, I mean, here's one that will shock them, Rabbi in a brothel. Right, that's a great story. Hey, yes, that's hilarious. Would it's any, very good. I would have written Rabbi in a brothel. It's a fiction or a room with a view to eternity. Oh, I've got to read something to you for one minute. Here's how the book was supposed to end. It was at a funeral right here in San Francisco many years ago. A friend's father had died, Henry. He was a Holocaust survivor who was missing three fingers on his right hand. The Nazi swine had cut his hand off in a saw just for fun. And he had become a very, very embittered man. I loved him. He was a great guy in any way, you know, lovely man. But, okay, he died. I went to his funeral. 
and I watched them lowering him into the ground. And I was going to end the book at the funeral. God, I wish I could find it. I, I, I know your time is short. I, I wasn't ready for this, so forgive me. I'll have to paraphrase, you know, the, the rocker's cackle. I don't know if you saw that line. It's a really great line. That's where I wanted it to end. Uh, I'll never find it when I need it. But didn't the so the pub you the, that's where you wanted to to end? But the publisher, I believe, wanted you to extend it further. Correct? They didn't want it to end on such a tragically depressing note at a funeral. Because here it is. I got it. Can I read it to you? Yeah, go for it. So so he's buried, and but he's not. Can I go back a half a page? So he's in Do the it. apartment right on Van Ness Avenue. And his son, Joel, says to him, he's been sick most of the night, vomiting from those toxic chemicals. He forced himself up and says, Joel, she's there. On your left, the angel of death. Joel gets scared. He says, Pop, there's nobody here but me and Mom. Murray stares at the big chair across the small room. To your right, Joel, on the couch. He's here with her. He stands up, starts to walk across the room and dies. I can see that even the anti-Semite Bob, my friend, is tearing up, wiping the tears from his face. Listen, you racist, I said to him, looking at that hole in the ground with Murray's casket so bare and hearing the rabbi's ancient chant and watching the young Mexican gravediggers moved by that chant, I became reminded of my own hole waiting. I never knew where I wanted to live, I whispered to Joel's friend from Israeli intelligence, and I sure don't know where I want to die. We never know where we're going to die, he reminded me with a 70s rocker's cackle and grin. That was supposed to be the end of the book. The 70s rockers cackle and grin from the Israeli intelligence friend, who I, I don't even remember who it was. But the point is, I thought that was the proper ending to this book of a funeral death, um, kind of like ambivalence, anger, mm -hmm. right? Cynicism. You know, me, the kind of guy I am. But the publisher said, no, you've got to give the reader something more hopeful. So I had to go dig into my own writings in my own soul, and I ended the book on a much more ho hopeful note, which was the savage duality of man, animal soul, spiritual soul. That's all. I don't want to hock the Chinook with this, as they were saying the Bronx. <laughs> yes, as my father used to say. But here's the line that I really love. This, this expresses a lot. This is from page 61. You, said, you say, quote, I wrote this book because I decided to get closer to God again. Okay, that says it all. You are... You are a true seeker, and I think God really loves those who are seeking him. I hope so. I can't tell you with any certainty. haven't met him yet. I hope he has a little time yet, yet before he wants to say hello. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm not there yet, don't know, but every day is, of course, that question of what it's all about. Is there really something there, you know, after it? Is it all a bunch of crap? Do we really know? Do we really know? But you have to live as though it is so. In other words, the point is, how can you live not thinking this? You know, they say that there are no atheists in the foxhole. I have a question. Are there any atheists in the cancer ward? Well, th this is the kind of a question that we would expect from you. But I'm, I'm thinking also, as I was reading from page 61, it, this is a different savage because you say you're at the same phase of your life that you were decades ago when you had moved so far away from God and became so cynical that your life started to unravel. Now you're on the comeback. You're moving closer to God again. Well, you're bringing up a very interesting point. I was kind of really at the bottom. Uh, I had tried very hard, was hitting stone walls because of various social forces in America, and I thought, bad luck. And I remember praying to God one day in Fairfax, California, right here in the Bay Area, making it very local and personal. I went out and I was on a mountaintop and I begged God to save me. I said, please, I have two young children. You can't do this to me. Please, as God is my witness, within a very short period of time, I was on KSFO radio with that fill-in show. Then I was on a regular show. Right. Of course, the rest is history. It's 23 years later of radio and broadcasting and, of course, one best-selling book after another. I have to believe that God's hand moved move something, celestially move pieces around. Something happened. And you know, over the last few months, if people have listened to my show, they've heard me faltering again. I mean, I know it in my soul. I've asked, why am I still doing radio? Why am I still on the air? What the hell does it all mean? 
what's the point of all of this when the world is, is in such a state of horror and America is committing suicide by inviting in people who would cut their throats and kill them? But I, I can't stop. I, you know, there's, I hate to make this a little, a little more maniacal than a megalomaniacal than I normally am uh, to show you I have humility. But, you know, look, <laughs> people think that Moses parted the Red Sea and the Jewish people crossed the Red Sea and found the Promised Land. Wrong. They crossed the Red Sea, and then they had to fight for the Promised Land. People forget that part of it. They were Good point. given the Promised Land. They had to fight for the Promised Land after they crossed the Red Sea. In other words, the battle is eternal. It never ends, in plain English. And I think we have to keep struggling until it's over. Period. End of story. Savage, this is a great book. This is going to be very popular. It comes out uh, the 14th, and you can pre-order it. So you can go to michaelsavage.com. There are plenty of ways to do that. No, no, but, go right to amazon.com or, or barnesandnoble.com. Skip me. Well, you got the links over there at michaelsavage.com, so they can get the latest headlines and, and yeah, the rest. I don't, but, it to my, I don't sell them off my website. But look, I want to say to you, you're doing a great job. It's not easy what you do all day long, a show in the morning for five hours, then mine for three. Let me ask you something. Where do you get the energy from? Well, I believe, you know, like, we, I believe I'm, I, this is my calling. I just know at this time in my life, God is giving me the strength and he's giving me the ability to do what I'm doing. And, and I will tell you something, Michael, as a guy, you, you were one of the inspirations for me to get in this business. I was a TV guy. I would listen to you faithfully every evening when you first started your show and uh, it was the most, it was different than any other radio show. And sadly, just like a good comedian, you know, a good comedian can inspire people to get in comedy when they have no business because they make it look easy. You made it look easy. You made it sound, I thought, well, I'd like to do this someday. But you were one of the reasons why I went down this road. You've been a great inspiration to me. And uh, I just find it amazing. All these years later, I get to fill, on, fill in on your show. Are you kidding me? That's unbelievable. Just think if I were a dentist, what kind of fillings you'd be doing today. <laughs> anyway, I do remember those early <laughs> Saturday night performances in a room at Alioto's restaurant. And you were one of the people who signed up to buy a dinner when I do my little 50-person live show. Yes, those yes. Yes, I mean, that's what kind of a fan I was. I really did. I just wanted to be in the room with you. And, uh, you know, you were, it was basically like, you basically did a stand-up routine. Do you remember that? It was hilarious. Fifty people would buy dinner. I had a microphone and a speaker, one assistant. It was a road show, and I would do a one-hour shtick. And it was more to meet a live audience, which I terribly miss on radio. It's one of the deficits of radio, working in home studios in particular, where there's nobody around. Uh, it's very hard. So I need to spend a lot more time at KSFO Studios, to be honest with you. Look, I'll let you go. I know, I know the timing as well as you. We're in a yes. set. We're hitting a crash I want to <laughs> I show. <laughs> All right, Dr. Savage. Have a great weekend. Have fun on Huckabee's show. I will, and I will not break a leg. That's good. <laughs> I know. All right, very good. Then there you go. We're about to have a crash. Yeah, I'm looking at the clock. It's going to crash and burn here if we don't take a break right now on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Fun. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Savage, and Dr. Savage makes a house call. So the guys and I were talking behind the scenes during that commercial break, the guys being Savage's crew. Think about this. I, Brian Sussman, got to do the first interview about Michael Savage's new book. That's Okay, that's huge. I'm just saying. Uh, it, it really is. It's not like any book Dr. Savage has written. God, faith, and reason. Just some wonderful stories from his life. I have a feeling a lot of this stuff was written a long time ago. Really, these are just timeless pieces that he's kept with him over the years. So there you go. First interview. 
A lot of people want to talk about this Bo Bergdahl situation, and there's one caller, many callers on hold, but there's one in particular I can't wait to talk. I I want to talk to all of them, but one guy's about to say this Bergdahl decision could invite desertion. Okay, so we're going to talk about this. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Friday edition of the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. I'm a fan of the Trump tweeting, by the way. Brian Sussman here filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. If you missed last hour, uh, shame on you, because Dr. Savage actually called in to his own program, and I got to conduct the first interview with him regarding his new book, God, Faith, and Reason. It was, (laughs) if I may say so myself, it was a great interview. Lively, passionate, the real deal. So Trump's tweeting, I'm a big fan, as I will explain a little later this hour, many reasons why, having been in the media and the news biz for decades now, I like the fact, among other things, that he bypasses the mainstream media, just totally bypasses them, and then hijacks the 24-hour news cycle. And he did it again today. So here we are, Bo Bergdahl. A lot of you want to talk about this on The Savage Nation. Phone number is... 855-400-7282, 855-400-7282. So Bergdahl walks off his base in Afghanistan. Um, I don't know what he was doing with the Taliban, but by all accounts, at one point or another, it looked like he was having a pretty good time. And on top of all that, we have some of our some of our finest going out to look for him and die and are wounded in the process. So the guy's sentence finally, finally. Oh, here's the big sentence. He pleaded guilty to endangering his comrades. He was fined. His rank was reduced. He was dishonorably discharged. No prison time. No prison time. And Donald Trump takes to Twitter aboard Air Force One for these meetings that he's going to be conducting in Asia. And boom, says this, the decision on Sergeant Bergdahl is a complete and total disgrace to our country and our military, to which I and many in this audience would say amen, amen, and amen. The decision on Sergeant Bergdahl is a complete and total disgrace to our country and to our military. That's the tweet. And now the callers. Ian is checking in from WABC, the New York area, which, of course, just saw a little uh, little terrorism up close and personal. Ian, thank you for joining us on the Savage Nation. Go right ahead. All right. Well, I'm a merchant marine officer, a captain in the Coast Guard for 16 years. And I just think this Bergdahl thing just set precedent that now when you're a yellow, backsliding, spineless dude in the middle of uh, uh, tough times when the going gets tough you're going to desert your your brothers in arms and you're not going to have anything to pay a matter of fact you'll come back in the left people like rice will say you're some type of hero right he'll write some book now you see judge what you did you just let this benedict arnold now he's going to be like kaepernick another unpatriotic american and he's going to write some book and get rich and i pray to god i don't know the law to go 
good. But I hope these families can sue this guy civilly. All the people that were lost and injured, the one guy that testified who had 20 surgeries. Bergdahl, you're a traitor, just like Manning, just like all the traitors throughout time. You should have got executed. And I'm sorry that we have weak people in positions that think that you shouldn't have been executed. And 14 years was a joke, let alone you didn't get a day. You know, the whole, I hope every way. Ian, thanks for calling. Appreciate your passion. Yeah, he mentioned uh, Rice. That's White House National Security Advisor Rice. Remember when she assured the public that Bergdahl had, quote, served the U.S. with distinction? Well, can I tell you something? As far as these lefties go, desertion is distinction. Do you get it? Do you understand what I'm saying? They look at a guy like Bergdahl. Yeah, that's our kind of soldier right there. Yeah, you're damn right. Ian's spot on. Let's go to Sal. Sal, give me some passion. Thanks for calling the Savage Nation. You're on the air. Yeah, hi. How you doing? I just wanted to call in because I'm so disgusted over what I heard today. This is... In the go ahead. And, and I'm a soldier in the New York Guard. This is very demoralizing. This will affect the morale of everyone who is serving. That this piece of, you know... Careful. Yep, you got it. This yep. piece of dirt here, who did what he did, gets no jail time. He goes scot-free. This is disgusting. I can't believe that th- this JAG judge did this. Sal, thanks for calling out of WABC. You know, you know what I love about doing this show? <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, of course, I do. my broadcast is in San Francisco. And you're thinking, okay, how's that work out for you? I know we're, it's, it's a liberal bastion. It's the liberal belly of the beast. I get it. But we're one-stop shopping for all your you know, brain, brain engaged in your head needs. I mean, we have Savage's show and my show in the morning and others. So we're a rallying point. And I love speaking to our people in the San Francisco Bay Area. We have a huge online audience as well. And occasionally we do get callers from the New York area. But with something like this Bergdahl thing, this is... This is, this is a story that gets you angry. If you're a patriotic, red, white, and blue, Constitution is, uh, is the law of the land type of guy or gal. You know what I'm saying? This, this makes you so mad. If you've ever had, if you've ever served in our military, if you have a, a, a son serving or a father who's served, this, this story has to get you even more upset. But there's nothing, can I just tell you as a guy born and raised in California, there's nothing, to me, there is nothing better than hearing people with that, with that stereotypical New York accent. I'm just <laughs> popping off on this stuff. I mean, it just gives it an edge that is palpable. I love it. I love it. You guys, you guys can say it with such passion. And again, the accent, just it, it makes it more real to me. You're expressing my feelings even better. So with that in mind, let's go to Doug, WABC. Doug, thanks for checking in on the Savage Nation. Bring it. You're on the air. Hey, how are you doing? My name is Doug Sattel. Um, I'm calling from Trenton Psychiatric Hospital. I had to record a judge in chambers tell me before I could prove he took a bribe that he was going to jail me first. And um, I'm sitting in here on the taxpayer's dollar. It's cost over a million dollars so far. So what I did to protect myself, I kept a little tape recorder in my pocket and recorded the judge on my YouTube. It says, uh, video 8 and 22, Doug, S-I-T-T-E-L. And he says, talk, and I'm going to put you in jail. And I said, how? He says, we're just going to have the police pull you over. And I called uh, Governor Christie, and um, I told him about it. And uh, his aide said to mail something in. And I told him that they're opening my mail and have affidavits. Okay, hold on. Put this guy on hold for a second. What is Help me out with these producers. What is this all about? Is this, as I'm looking at what he was going to talk about, is he going down a path that I should be going down? Is he getting to the, is he getting to the, he is? Okay, good. All right, good. If he, Doug, get back on the air. I wasn't sure where you were going, but continue now. Continue, please. Go ahead. Anyway, I'm calling you from Trenton Psych Hospital. I recorded the judge say, look, before you can prove I took a bribe, I'm going to put you away. I'm going to put you in order a psychic who's saying, I'm going to jail you first before I have to flee to a non-extradited country. And I called Bonnie Watson Coleman's office, and 
Governor Christie's office, and they said, mail something in. I told them, I can't mail anything. They're opening my mail and throwing it in the garbage to keep me incarcerated. And I recorded it all and put it on my YouTube video 22 and 8. You can hear the... Okay, all right, call, call, call him off. So, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> well, I, we th- I, uh, the description that he gave us of what he wanted to talk about sounded legit, and I thought this was a way of getting there, but not not the case. All right, let's continue here. Um, there are uh, there are some people who well, let me, this Bergdahl thing has people up in arms right now. Um, let's go to Ray calling from the San Francisco Bay Area right now. Ray, former infantryman. Uh, this is interesting, Ray. So back when you were serving as an infantryman, what would have happened to you if you would have walked off your post? Brian, I served honorably under uh, Ronald Reagan as my commander-in-chief, and we were told as infantrymen if we left our post in combat, we could expect a, a, uh, a quick trial and execution for desertion. And uh, and I believed it, and, it and, and nobody I know even thought about such a thing. Brian, I've got three nephews who just honorably served in the Marine Corps and in the armies. All of them did tours of duty in Afghanistan, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Korea. They've been all over the globe. And um, this is such a dishonor to, to them and to all the men and women who are serving um, to, to have this disgrace, um, wear an Army uniform. He should, he should be locked up, if not put to death. And um, it, it, it's just a travesty to see what's going on here. Um, I'm glad that he got busted down, that but it took too long. The guy got a promotion while he got a promotion while he was in captivity, right. we're told. Think about that. And died. Six men died looking for him. And here, I have this on a reliable source, and it's not being said in the news. The five Taliban generals or al-Qaeda generals that we traded for this piece of dirt have all been found on the battlefield. Every single- I've heard the same thing. I've heard the same thing. And as I shared in the first hour, uh, I, I have a very good friend who was a listener to uh, my program and Savage's program in San Francisco, who worked as an intelligence officer at Gitmo. He knew these guys up close and personal. He said there was no way in the world they could have been rehabbed ever. And he predicted the moment they were released that soon enough they'd be back on the battlefield. And according to my sources, they, they have been. And I've heard the same thing. I've heard the same thing. Thank you, President Obama. What a great deal you made for yeah, us. What a wonderful deal. Yeah, what a wonderful deal. Ray, thanks for checking in. I want to go to Ron next. Ron, Vietnam vet, quickly, please. I think you'll dovetail nicely with Ray's call. Go ahead. How you doing? I, 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 was, I served uh, Vietnam era. And, you know, having a dishonorable discharge, as I thought, was a disgrace, and it was like looking for a job. In back of my head, I said, you know, it's like if you want a job and, and you show dishonorable discharge, you shouldn't be getting one, or you should be... <laughs> right. Well, it's, like, it's like being a sex offender or a pedophile, even. I mean, it's just that, that used to be a horrible disgrace, and you didn't want anybody to ever know about that. But, Ron, you just wait to see what happens, and I appreciate your call in the Savage Nation. This guy's going to, he's going to be a cause celeb. He'll be the hero of the left. Uh, he will, no doubt, be on MSNBC as a consultant in no time flat. We're talking about Bo Bergdahl and the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Well, Hillary's out there dumping on Trump. What else is new? Uh, She's on Comedy Central. Great place for her because she's a real laugh riot. Anyway, she's talking about Trump. He's he's trying to undo much of the 20th century. Uh, Take a listen to this, clip five. 
Look, I think there is a lot of spite involved. And I don't think it's just against President Obama, although that is his primary uh, target. He's going back and trying to undo or, frankly, ignore things that were done by prior presidents. So I think that people who follow these issues have to be much more outspoken. And yes, he's going to try to undo, I'm afraid, much of the 20th century at the rate we're going here. And we can't let that happen. You know what we can't let happen? Hillary not be prosecuted. That's what we can't let be happen. I mean, seriously, this woman must be prosecuted. For what? Oh, well, how about this? The Maryland judge ordering an investigation into three lawyers who reportedly helped Hillary delete her private emails. It's an, invest- it's an ethics investigation, but um, Jeff Sessions, I think, should investigate, indict, and prosecute. They should prosecute Mrs. Clinton because there's ample evidence of her guilt. They should prosecute anybody that destroyed evidence in a criminal investigation. How about this? She could be tried for treason. For what? Well, how about her role in authorizing the sale of Uranium One to the Russian state-owned nuclear company Rosatom while serving as Secretary of State? That's treason as far as I'm concerned, and many would agree. I mean, the Russians infiltrated our national security to corner the uranium market. And guess what? They succeeded. Thanks to Hillary Clinton. If this had happened in the 50s, there would be people on treason charges right now. I'm thinking of the Rosenbergs. Giving away nuclear capability to our enemies. I think that's what we're talking about. That's what needs to happen. Or how about this? What's the difference between the infamous Russian dossier on Donald Trump, which is just full of garbage, talk about fake news, and the random fake news story you saw last on CNN? Hillary Clinton and the Democrat National Committee paid as much as $9 million for that discredited dossier on Trump. Look into it, folks. Look into it. Oh, and then there's old Joe Biden. Trump's tweeting is childish. That's what he's saying. Trump's tweeting is childish. You want to talk about childish individuals? Oh, I mean, the, the jokes that this guy would say, Mr. Gaftastic on a regular basis, it's like some little high school kid. Here's Joe Biden, clip six. We've got to stop this tweeting. We've got to stop this sort of... No, no I, it, it, it is so... And I've tried to stay out of the mosh pit, the president and I, Obama and I have but it's childish. it's childish. It's time to grow up. Grow up, yeah. Hey, how about this, Joe Biden? Why didn't Why didn't you grow up? Uh, why didn't you grow up before you said this? You can't go to a Seven Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. I'm not joking. That's the kind of these are the kind of jokes this guy tells, right? This is the kind of stuff he says. Joe Biden. And then, oh, there's John McCain. John McCain. He also says to Trump, stop tweeting. Stop tweeting. Stop attacking Republicans. Clip seven. Stop tweeting. I think I'd say stop tweeting. I think I would also say, look, there's no reason to attack Republicans. We got enough people to attack them. Well, you guys like you are the swamp. You need to be not just attacked, but drained. We'll talk more about this in the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Always a pleasure. Always an honor to speak with you on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. You know, when you think about it, by the way, Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. Go to michaelsavage.com for all the latest news. Also, in our first hour, I had the uh, great pleasure of interviewing Michael Savage. The first interview regarding his new book, God, Faith and Reason, which I'm reading. And it's, it's a delightful read. It's unlike any other book he has ever written. And I think you'll find the book inspirational. I think you'll find the book, uh, it's it's a lot of serendipity. Stories in the book, personal stories that cause you just to wonder, 
wonder about the big picture. You know, the picture from 30,000 feet looking down. Your life, your eternity, God, faith. Uh, it's, 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 it's an exciting book. I'm truly enjoying it. Again, you can go to, uh, just go online, Barnes & Noble, Amazon. You can order it accordingly. It doesn't come out until the 14th. But when you think about Trump, uh, think of all the garbage this guy's inherited that he's got to deal with. All of the problems in this world that have been ignored, all the cans that have been kicked down the road that he's got to deal with, right? I mean, finally, we have a non-politician who wants to do something about this. Our taxes need to be overhauled. Is this bill perfect that we've been uh, that we, we're, we're, we're talking about here? Um, no, it's not. There are things in it I don't like. But I don't know that there's ever going to be a perfect bill. We just need a tax overhaul. We need tax rates lowered across the board, especially for our corporations. That's for sure. We finally have a president who wants to deal tough with terrorism. Finally, a guy who will call it like it is right off the bat. A guy who, could you imagine if Bo Bergdahl, if, if, if this would have happened when Barack Obama was president, Bo, Bo Bergdahl gets, basically gets off. No prison time, dishonorable discharge. Great. Dishonorable discharge isn't going to keep him from working. He'll be on MSNBC as a consultant, no time flat. Trump comes out and says this. The decision on Sergeant Bergdahl is a complete and total disgrace to our country and to our military. I mean, he's got to clean. Donald Trump has to clean up a mess that's been in the making for years. Jerry's checking in. Jerry's out on the East Coast, WABC. Jerry, go right ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. I'm originally from New York. Now I'm in Jersey. But, uh, you know, this mess really started. we got to go back to history. we got to go back to Carter when he relieved the shore from Iran because he wasn't the Boy Scout, but he at least was moving in the right direction. Then you got to skip over and go You go to uh, Bush, the, Bush the Elder. Everything Reagan did, he undid. Then it was continued through Clinton and through... The other Bush, and now this other guy. He's cleaning up 40 years of stupidity, regardless of political party. You're right. He's got he's got a lot of cleaning up to do, and and that cleanup is the swamp. I appreciate your call. Then you got John McCain. He needs to stop the tweeting. He needs to stop the tweeting. You know, John McCain. Um, the media has been covering for him for the longest time. This this man is foul. He's foul. Oh, let me prove it to you. I know we're going back into the time vaults, but I collect this stuff. This is something he literally said at a at a fundraiser in 1998. Are you ready for this? This is this is disgusting. Do you know why Chelsea Clinton is so ugly? Because Janet Reno is her father. Now, regardless of what you think involving the humor there, I'm just saying that's that, that was told at a fundraiser. Chelsea Clinton was a teenager at the time. Come on, man. Here's another one for you. This is this, this. Did you hear the one about the woman who, who was attacked on the street by a gorilla, beaten senseless, raped, left to die? When she finally begins to regain consciousness and tries to speak, her doctor leans over to hear her sigh contently and to feebly ask, where is that marvelous ape? This guy's a sicko. He's a sicko, and he's a jerk. He's a sick jerk. And then you got this person. This is one of the leaders of the Democrat Party. If John McCain, by default, is, a leader of the, is one of the leaders of the Democrat Party these days. I mean, the left loves him right now, right? So this is Elizabeth Warren, you know, Pocahontas, the one who claimed that she was Native American, and then at the end of the day, well, whoops, I made a mistake on that. Got the heritage wrong. So here she is saying we've got to hold the Democrat Party accountable. The Democrat Party is in complete disarray right now. With each passing week, we're learning more about the shambles in which it finds itself, which is fine with me. I mean, all they have at this point in time, Nancy Pelosi, my congresswoman's out there. She's uh, endorsed Dianne Feinstein for senator. And in her endorsement of Dianne Feinstein, what does she say? Listen to this. This is a real problem. 
But what we've got to do as Democrats now is we've got to hold this party accountable. Uh, when Tom Perriello was first, uh, Tom Perez was first uh, the elected name. chair of the DNC, the very first conversation I had with him is to say, you have got to put together a Democratic Party in which everybody can have confidence that the party is working for Democrats rather than Democrats are working for the party. And he's being tested now. This is a test for Tom Perez. Mm -hmm. So this fake Indian walks into a bar. Pocahontas. Pocahontas. Hey, a giraffe walks into a bar and the bartender said, hey, you want a long neck? Giraffe says, do I have a choice? Hey, a penguin walks through the bar and asks the bartender if he's seen his brother. Bartender replies, I'm not sure. What does he look like? Hey, a goldfish walks into the bar and looks at the bartender. Bartender asks, what can I get you? If goldfish says water. Pocahontas. Pocahontas. So here's Nancy Pelosi. She's out there saying this. Let me just read the quote to you. This, this shows you the problems that the Democrat Party finds itself in at this point in time. I mean, they're really... They're bankrupt. So she has now endorsed Dianne Feinstein for senator. I think Dianne Feinstein, I'm not making, I think she's like, I think she's 86. Six-year term. Uh, and when you listen to Nancy Pelosi, okay, clearly there's, there's something wrong. I don't know if it's old age. I don't know if there's a health issue. She, she's mumbling. She's bumbling. Her face is contorting when she talks. Dianne Feinstein, sometimes it's like... Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Pelosi endorses Feinstein. Great. I love it. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. This is the face of the Democrat Party. Bring it. You guys are so out of touch. I love it. So Pelosi says this. Dianne Feinstein is uniquely positioned to defend California against Donald Trump's constant attacks on health care, immigration, and voting rights. They're going to go into this midterm election. Are you ready for this? They're going to go into the midterm election with the same plan they had going into this last general election. It's all about Trump. And that didn't work. They're so Trump wasted. That's going to be their go to playbook again. Fine. Republicans are going to have a run at the table. This is great. Maybe we can bring in some really good people to replace the rhinos and the swamp creatures that are in the Republican Party as of right now. Great. I love it. Absolutely love it. Let's see if we've got another piece of sound here for you. We've got Elizabeth Warren, Pocahontas. Oh, more on the tweeting, this time from Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama talking about Trump's tweets. Okay, clip three. Listen to this. This whole tell it like it is business, that's nonsense. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't just say what's on your mind. You don't tweet every thought. Most of your first initial thoughts are not... Yes. Worthy of the light of day. Yes. <laughs> and I, I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I'm talking about us all. <laughs> we are so not because, talking about anybody in particular. Because everybody no. does that. I mean, that's yeah. the thing about young people. All right, cut it off. Think. That's fine. That's fine. That's Michelle Obama at the Obama Foundation Summit. So they have a foundation now. Um, great way to hide some money. But the bottom line is, uh, I love Trump's tweets. The, L Michelle Obama, they all know how effective this is. He bypasses the mainstream media, he hijacks the news cycle, he sets the record straight, and he emboldens his base with the tweets, like the tweet today from Air Force One. The decision on Bergdahl is a complete and total disgrace to our country and our military. Absolutely. So people want to talk about this on the Savage Nation. Let's go to Rick. Rick's on KSFO. Rick, good, good afternoon, good evening. You're on the Savage Nation. Go right ahead. Well, congratulations on your interview there, Ryan. And that was a fun interview with Dr. Savage, wasn't it? Yeah, that was kick. It was really great. Hey, listen, one thing we don't know about Bergdahl, and uh, give you an analogy, is that when a prisoner is held and, and as a deserter, he, you know, he obviously did a pretty good job of convincing him that he, just, he wanted to be on their side because they didn't kill him. And good point. Funny point. The funny part about it is, is that most of, of the people that go into a prisoner's atmosphere and they get conned and they take that person and, and try to have him prove, it's like the gangs. Okay, you got to go out and murder somebody that flashes their lights at you in San Jose. Remember that? Mm -hmm. that's, that's part of a gang ritual, gang hazing. 
So they take this guy and they put him, they full figure with a squad and the Taliban goes out and kills a bunch of people and or they take him to a Christian place and a bunch of Christians are lined up and he's ordered to shoot them all. Remember Lawrence of Arabia? No, I, I know the title of the film, but I've never, never seen it. He shot his friend to prove to them that he was loyal to the Arabs. Okay. He killed his own friend, okay? Okay. So anyway, this is the stuff that we don't know about Bergdahl. And so if he proved himself to that, this is an infiltration uh, activity getting him back into, the, into America. Also, you know, redistribution of wealth, paying all these people for how many years? You know, and all, all of this that goes down and, and the guys that lost their li- lives just wants to make, you know, I just want to vomit. It just, I mean, it, 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 no, it's it, disgusting. Rick, I appreciate your call on the Savage Nation. I mean, think about this. Um, Bergdahl being held, if he was being held against his will, if he was being held against his will, uh, then we negotiated with terrorists. In, in any case, we negotiate with terrorists. We, we don't negotiate with terrorists. That's, that's the hallmark of the way we do business. We don't negotiate with terrorists. In this particular case, look at the deal we did. We give five kingpins, five jihadist kingpins back to the enemy. Five guys that were at Gitmo. You heard me in the first hour of the Savage Nation. If you didn't, I'll repeat it. I have a friend who worked intel at Guantanamo Bay, knew those five guys up close and personal, had been involved in interrogations. He told me, and has told me on many occasions, there's no way these guys could have been rehabilitated. There's no way. We gave them back. And there have been reports that they're back at it because it's in their blood. They're doing their service to Allah in the process. So we're talking about that on the Savage Nation. And, of course, the phone number, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-SAVAGE. Oh, yes, but wait, there's more. Here is, well, we'll get to Chuck Schumer in just a moment. Let's go to Democrat. This is Democrat Representative Nadler. He's talking about the New York City attack. Are you ready for this? He said this attack and the attacker this jihadist who'd been here five years via the diversity lottery program, he says, oh, this story has nothing to do with immigration. Clip 12, please. Well, it's, it's total hypocrisy, obviously, as you pointed out, uh, after the uh, Las Vegas uh, uh, gun attack. Uh, it's, it's wrong to talk about gun policy, but here we can go off half-cocked and talk about immigration policy when this probably had nothing to do with immigration. Um, and he, he just uses the, the culture wars uh, on any excuse he gets to rally his base. This guy's a pinhead. Nothing to do with immigration. It has everything to do with immigration, the wrong kind of immigration, letting people in this country have done us harm. I mean, where's the old adage? If we could only stop one, it's worth it. Well, this diversity lottery program, eight killed, eight killed, 11 wounded, very seriously. All because of this guy coming into our country. We'll talk more about this. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Brian Sussman in for Dr. Savage on the Savage Nation. We've been talking about a big story, the Bergdahl situation. No prison time. Let's go to Michael listening on WSBA in PA. How you doing, Michael? Go ahead quickly, please. Yes, sir. Um, yes, I did not understand how this guy got out of that. I don't understand. I knew Marines that got seven years in Leavenworth for less doing less things. And how yeah, it's... how he got out of this, I don't understand. That's a disgrace. I mean, does anybody know how he got out of this? I, it is a disgrace. It's bewildering. Trump said it perfectly. Um, th- and to think, Michael, that we lost men who were hunting for this guy. You know, he deserts his post. Men go out to try to find him. They lose their lives. Others seriously wounded. 
Lives turned upside down forever as a result of this. And the guy basically gets a slap on the wrist, and he's going to be a big celebrity of the left going forward. I knew Marines that never even did anything like he did. And I knew he did, they didn't kill anybody, but they did stupid stuff. And they got they got the book thrown at them. I mean, it was terrible. I was a chaser in the Marine Corps, which means I would chase the prisoners to the court martial and from the court martial back to the brig. And sometimes and this bothers you. I mean, you've seen you've seen this process up close and personal, and this blows your mind. That is correct. This is totally different than anything. I do not why know why that man is not in a brig somewhere or Leavenworth right now. Or or preparing for execution. Michael, appreciate your service, appreciate you and your mission. You know, that's one of the things I've learned, uh, because the left is so quick, aren't they? Oh, thank you for your service. And uh, in the back of their mind, they're kind of rolling their eyes like, you lame brain, you got suckered into it, didn't you? So here's what I like to say. Thank you for your service and for the mission. And for the mission. Because I support you guys and your mission. Bergdahl. What was his mission? We'll talk more about this. So glad to be with you, as always, on this, The Savage Nation. For all your latest news needs, go to michaelsavage.com. And, of course, don't forget the book. Pre-order it right now, God, Faith, and Reason. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Brian Sussman in for Michael Savage. We had a treat during the first hour of this program. Michael actually called in. I interviewed him about the new book, God, Faith, and Reason. I enjoyed the interview so much, I'm going to, I'm actually going to repeat it during my morning show Monday on KSFO in San Francisco. By the way, I thank so many of you for listening to our morning show. You're listening from all over the country. Savage has... It's it's almost like a cult. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll use this term in a fond way. It's a cult following. People love the Savage Nation. They listen from all over the country and around the world. And uh, because his flagship station is KSFO in San Francisco, a lot of people have discovered my show that I do with Katie Green every morning from five to nine a.m. Pacific. So now, for a local program, I mean, we are a local show. We're not syndicated like Michael is. We're just a local show. But we have the largest online audience of any local show in America. That's been verified time and time again. So thank you. It's awesome. And uh, you can always follow me, Brian underscore Sussman. Brian underscore Sussman on Twitter. I retweet a lot of the stuff that Michael comes out with, which is always fun and insightful. We're talking about Bo Bergdahl. Now, the staff of the Savage Nation has uh, come up with some golden oldies. But let me, let me, just, let me just give you the, the record as we see it right now today. My jaw dropped when I heard this this morning. Bergdahl pleads guilty to endangering his comrades by walking away from his post in Afghanistan. He pled guilty. Now, you'll remember the story. There was a search for Bergdahl. It left several troops badly wounded. There are some accounts that men died in the process as well. A military judge ruled Bergdahl should serve no prison time, but gave him a dishonorable discharge and reduced his rank to private and fined him. One of the wounded soldiers, this is a guy from California, Jonathan Morita, still doesn't have use of his dominant hand bones, 
a hand, I should say, after his bones were shattered when he was hit by an RPG, which, by the way, didn't explode. Asked by phone about his reaction to Bergdahl's sentence, he said, I've had better days. He added, quote, the dishonorable discharge means he can't receive any of these services like I can. He'll pay the fine like people get fined for illegal fishing. Okay, whoop de doop he says. whoop de doop whoop de doop Bo Bergdahl's defense lawyer has told reporters after sentencing that his client, quote, has looked forward to today for a long time. Sergeant Bergdahl is grateful to everyone who searched for him back in 2009, especially those who heroically sustained injuries. Okay, I'll give you the phone number once again, 855-400-7282, 855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go back in the audio vault, shall we? Now, here's Susan Rice. Okay, yeah, oh, yes, Susan Rice. Remember her? Susan Rice, White House National Security Advisor. Here's what she said about Bergdahl back when he was, we, we traded, okay, keep this in mind, folks. We got him from the Taliban we negotiated with terrorists. We said, hey, guys, you give us Bergdahl, we'll give you five Taliban kingpins. We'll release him from Gitmo. Here's Susan Rice talking about Bo Bergdahl. Listen to this. Certainly uh, anybody who's been held in those conditions in captivity for five years has paid an extraordinary price. But that, that is really uh, not the point. The point is that he's back. He's going to be safely reunited with his family. He served the United States with honor and distinction. And we'll have the opportunity eventually to to learn what has transpired in in the past years. But what's most important now is his health and well-being, that he have the opportunity uh, to recover in peace and security and be uh, reunited with his family. See, this is the kind of person that the left feels served with distinction because they deserted. They don't have a problem with deserters. No, the deserters, they took the moral high ground. They were following their conscience, following their gut. (sighs) They're traitors. These are traitors we're talking about here, folks. Uh, What was the, guys, what was the other one you had? You had Susan Rice, and then there were two more. What were the other cuts? Uh, Oh, platoon. Oh, okay, good. Okay, so now let's go to one of his platoon mates. Okay, this guy deserts his post. Let's hear what one of the guys who served with him has to say. Listen to this. He did not serve the United States with honor. We all took an oath. He violated his oath when he deserted us and put other Americans in jeopardy. I can't prove that he caused deaths, but what I can prove is those soldiers uh, would not have been there at that location that they died or were severely injured, there's a high probability that they would not be there looking for him if he didn't desert, because then we wouldn't have a mission to find him. <laughs> That's one of his platoon mates. This is a guy who knew him. This is a guy who served with him. Now, we know men were wounded, seriously wounded, looking for him. There are some accounts that people died looking for him. Uh, now, then, then you remember that really weird, it was this, it was bizarre. Obama's out there in the Rose Garden. He's thinking everybody's going to be so happy to see his family. Here's the family. And the guy comes out. You know, there are guys who can get away with the long beards, and there are other guys who should never be wearing the long beards. I'm thinking of, uh, yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying, right? It, it, the, the ZZ Top type beard. I mean, there are some guys that can pull that off really well. And there are some guys that can't. Bo Bergdahl's dad didn't pull it off. In fact, I'm looking at this thinking, wait, is is he converted to Islam? What kind of beard? What is the deal here? Strange. Then the old man starts talking in Arabic. This was a weird moment. Remember this? Take a listen. I'd like to say to Bo right now, who's having trouble speaking English, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Zayabayim. I'm your father, Bo. Luke, I am your father. Weird. Weird. Uh, Let's go ahead, because you want to talk about this on the Savage Nation. Let's go to Cliff. Cliff's in Michigan. WJML. Cliff, you're on the Savage Nation with Brian Sussman filling in. Go ahead, please. Hey, good afternoon there, Brian. 
I'm calling because if I recall right, Bo Bergdahl got like four hundred thousand dollars in back pay when he returns to this country. Uh, any chance that he's going to be paying that back? <laughs> I don't know that this this is just so bizarre. I mean, he's being treated as if he was caught uh, jaywalking. This is just amazing, Cliff. Uh, I'm retired. I'm retired Air Force, and uh, this judge is a joke. Uh, I can't believe that he's going to have any respect among his colleagues. You know, I mean, this U.S. Army, I can't believe that he would bring down a sentence like Bo Birdall got today. Well, you know, it's interesting because Senator Lindsey Graham from South Carolina, he's not one of my favorite politicians by any by any means. He he used to be an Air Force lawyer. I didn't realize that until today. He was an Air Force lawyer for more than 30 years. He said that this set he said, "quote this sentence in my view falls short of the gravity of the of the, of the offense." I mean, everybody's flummoxed by this. It's just amazing how this could happen, Cliff. There's uh, there's no time for the crime, and, uh, you know, I can't believe that he's going to get much respect among uh, fellow Idaho, you know, residents, because that's... Uh, yeah, that's I'm with you. No, this is just bizarre. Cliff, thanks for checking in on the Savage Nation. Uh, okay, so... Jack's calling KLIF. So, Jack, you have a little different take on this. Go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, he, he spent time in a, in a prison by hostiles already, so I think they took that into consideration. And uh, there's another thing, too. It's very bad as I feel about the injury to his, com- his comrades. You know, we have to always keep in mind who the trigger puller is worse. That's the enemy. That's the Afghan Taliban. They're the ones who are at fault for his buddy's injuries. The enemy. It's like that movie Saving Private Ryan where they go in there and they have to save that private. The the Nazis are the ones that shot them trying to save their comrades. It's not the Private Ryan's fault. It's the Nazis. So in this case, it's the Nazi Taliban fault for the injuries of our soldiers. And we don't need to make a dog and pony show out of Bergdahl's misfortune. You know, he's... he's wack- well, his mis- okay, but Jack, his misfortunes were brought upon himself. He deserted his post. He even admitted to that. He admitted to putting his... He admitted to putting his comrades in danger. I realize that they were shot at by the enemy, but at the same time, he put his comrades in that position to be shot at by the enemy, and the time he spent with the Taliban, um, they were using him as a propaganda piece, and there have been many reports saying that he, 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 was, he was practically a convert. I don't know if he, what, what he was suffering from, but if they really disliked him all that much, they would have killed him. His time spent with the Taliban... You know what? Um, at the end of the day, this man is fortunate to be alive because in days gone by in this country, he would have been executed, if not at least had a life sentence. And now what we're going to wind up is seeing him on MSNBC as a celebrity. I appreciate your call in the Savage Nation. Okay, we've got to take a quick break, but we'll come back with more. A lot of people want to talk about this, obviously. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. things I want to talk about here on the Savage Nation, Brian Sussman, Phil, again, and we will. We still have time. A lot of people want to talk about Bergdahl. But here's Prince William warning there are too many people in the world. Well, this is what the rich do. They always put out these warnings about too many people because at the end of the day, they just want them. The elites just want the world to themselves. And it's... Uh, this was... This was... This is Marxism. Marxism 101. The laws of matter... 
the whole idea that there are too many people on the planet and those people on the planet are, have been born with inferior brains, most of them. And we, the elites, need to have heavy-handed rules, regulations, laws to keep them under control or else they'll kill each other and destroy the planet. But, you know, here's an interesting thing. You could it, – it's, it's not so much a population issue, in my opinion. It's a management issue. It's a distribution issue. Uh, take the density of New York – of Manhattan. Take the density of Manhattan. The entire population of the globe could fit in New Zealand. Okay, um, how about this? If everyone lived as densely as they do in Bangladesh, you could fit the entire human race in Australia. If you lined us all up shoulder to shoulder, chest to chest, et cetera, chest to back, etc., you could fit us all in Jacksonville, Florida. It's, it's a management issue. It's not that there are too many people, but we'll get into that a little later. And there are some great callers, as you come to expect on the Savage Nation. Uh, for example, John, listening on KSFO, uh, John, I understand you actually have have been involved with court martials. So you're looking at this situation involving Bo Bergdahl, and the judge says, okay, no prison time for you. We'll give you a demotion. You're going to have to pay a small fine, and uh, you'll get the dishonorable discharge. What say you, John? Uh, nauseates me. I'm a graduate of the Naval Justice School. 30 years on active duty in the Navy, uh, set on a few general court marshals and other type of court marshals, where the troop got, uh, <laughs> for what he did, uh, I'm, I'm so angry right now, I'm having a hard time talking. Some of the- this is what I'm, I'm, he- I'm hearing this from so many vets that this uh, you know, on this program have called in. And they they are literally speechless, and you can hear you can hear the quiver in their voice. They're getting so emotional. And John, you've been involved in the court martial process. You've been there, done that. Okay, so this guy, he admits he was guilty of endangering troops. He admits that he deserted his post, and this is it. Uh, I, I I I'm sorry. I I just can't. It's it just. <laughs> Based on the facts as you see them and based on all of your experience in those courts, what should have been a proper penalty? A uh, proper penalty should have been either life imprisonment or death. So what does this say going forward? What is this? What, what lesson is learned for troops in the future from this? Well, I think about some of my troops. I served a lot of time with the Marines. Uh, I... What does it say to them? Well, I, I, I'll probably get in trouble with this, but it say don't trust the lawyers. But uh, Well, I mean, this having is... Having said that, I don't know. Of course, I, I retired in 87, so I don't know how I would talk to my troops. I literally don't. Well, I tell you, the guys that served with him are speaking, and they're appalled. These are guys who served with him. They're appalled. Yeah. I I mean, I I just flipped on the TV here, and I saw a picture of him sitting in his man dress in the uh, back of that pickup truck crying. Right. And that just, that's what set me off to call. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you called, and I thank you, sir, for being just a great American. Gosh. American patriot, veteran, I thank you for your service, and I thank you for the mission. Well, we've got more business to take care of here in the Savage Nation. It's just, you you just never know what's going to happen next with some of the wonderful callers that we have. So we'll get back to more of those. A lot of people want to check in, and rightly so. Brian Sussman filling in. By the way, the first hour was really fun. Uh, We got to speak with Dr. Savage about the new book, God, Faith, and Reason. You can go to Amazon, you can go to a Barnes & Noble, any of the online stores to get an advanced copy uh, or to order, I should say, pre-order the book. It comes out November 14th. Brian Sussman here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.
Callers stay on hold. Lots of passion out there regarding this Bo Bergdahl punishment. Bo Bergdahl, the traitor. Bo Bergdahl, the deserter. Bo Bergdahl, who put his troops' lives on the line as they went to search for their their comrade. Bo Bergdahl, the one we swapped out Taliban members for. Five Taliban kingpins from Gitmo. People want to talk about this, of the Savage Nation, and rightly so. 855-400-7282. Brian Sussman filling in. A couple of the other stories. We'll get to your calls in just a moment. A couple of the other stories. Uh, we have big Antifa protests begin tomorrow. A series of anti-government leftist rallies descend on major cities beginning Saturday. It's this, this refused fascism. Isn't it interesting, these skulls full of mush? have taken on the term, refuse, uh, f- re- the phrase, refuse fascism, when they're in fact the fascists. 20 cities, Atlanta, Austin, Boston, Chicago, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Minneapolis, New York City, Seattle, Philadelphia, and of course, my city is San Francisco. And here's what they said. Listen to this. I'm reading from one of their publications. It's a call, a refuse fascism call to action. Those who lived through Nazi Germany and sat on the sidelines, looking on as Hitler demonized, criminalized, eventually rounded up one group after another, became shameful collaborators with monstrous crimes. These, these bastards, and I use that properly. I use the word properly. They're using the Holocaust. They're using the Holocaust, perverting the memory of those who were persecuted for being God's chosen people and persecuted for other things as well. They're trying to twist this into something like that. Are you kidding me? Nazi Germany? You people are sick. You're disgusting. And they're not going to stop, they say. It begins tomorrow. We're not going to stop until Trump's impeached. Well, that's not going to happen. Uh, Trump is on his big Asian tour right now. It's going to be a 10-day tour. I guess no president has done a 10-day tour of that nature for 25 years. Well, I hope he gets something accomplished. I hope he really does have a discussion with China regarding fentanyl. Fentanyl is nasty. Synthetic opioid, easily, easily obtained here in the United States. Cheap, comes from China. They're making it in China. Some say it's being used as a weapon in China's 21st century war against the United States. So he's going to talk about this with the president. I don't know what can be done, but something needs to be done. This is an awful, awful, awful drug. You've heard about Snoop Dogg's new album cover? I don't even want to talk about it. Do you live in one of the most sexually diseased states? (laughs) Jeez. Uh, Alaska, Mississippi, Louisiana, Georgia, New Mexico, North Carolina, South Carolina, Arkansas, Delaware, and Oklahoma. Those are the... Those are the states with the most sexual um, disease. The occult is on the rise. No surprise to me. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. I spent a lot of time south of the San Francisco Bay Area in a place called Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz and the Santa Cruz Mountains have been the, the epicenter for the occult for years, for decades. In fact, way a long time ago, I put together a, a, a DVD. Well, it was actually a video then. Um... It was called America's Best Kept Secret. It's no longer available, but it was such a well-done documentary that the FBI used it for training purposes. It just talked about the occult and satanic ritual abuse in this country. It's all for real. Now it's on the rise. And you know what these witches and warlocks are doing? They're casting spells on Donald Trump. Well, good luck with that. In the meantime, uh, you want to... Well, the book... We go from the occult to this book, God, Faith, and Reason. Trump, uh, I should say, Michael Savage's new book comes out the 14th. We interviewed Michael in the first hour of this program regarding the book. And um, this is this is one man and his, you know, he's, he's, he's seeking God. And I, I think God, God loves us all. He does. He loves the good, bad, and the ugly. But I personally believe that God loves those who are seeking him. In, in a special way where, uh, you know, if you're, if you're honestly seeking him 
and you're sincerely seeking him, I believe he will reveal himself to you. And this is this you're going to have a bunch of stories from Michael in this book. Some are a page long, some are many pages long, but just wonderful, fascinating, thought provoking stories. So I I highly encourage it. I'm about halfway through the book at this point in time. Got my advanced copy. So now Bergdahl, Bergdahl. Here we have so many veterans so upset about this. You hear it in their voice. If you're just tuning in, we've had vets calling in all show. And you can, you can hear it. They're passionate about this. They can't understand how could this man do no prison time whatsoever? Ah, let's go to Stephanie. Stephanie's calling from KFAQ in Oklahoma. Stephanie, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Brian. Um, I'm very upset and offended by this, and um, I really feel for my fellow veterans out there. Um, this is a complete slap in the face to all of us who have served, who have put our life on the line, for those of us who have lost friends in the line of service. Mm-hmm. Um, basically what this is saying is you can go in the military, you can disobey orders, and get away with it. And um, it's just not right. We're, we're disciplined. I was enlisted. When you go in, you're disciplined, you're, you follow orders, you build yourself up, you become a better human being, you fight for your country, you're, you're, you're an extreme patriot. And, and for somebody to do what he did and to get away with it, it what's our country going to come to? This is horrible. Well, that's a great point, Stephanie. And in fact, I think, Stephanie, we'll go from you to Linda. Linda, I think you can tag on nicely to Stephanie's comments. You're on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Go right ahead. Yes, I, too, am extremely angry, and I, I feel like it sends a message to the, to the world. The world is watching. It emboldens the enemy. Um, and I just... I'm at a loss for words. I am so angry. Sorry to be the emotional female, but I actually cried this afternoon because of the direction our country is going. I'm a patriotic American, and this, I don't know where this judge's head was. I guess I kind of know where it is, but um, I just, I can't get over it. I'm so upset. And I don't know. you, You and so many others, and I appreciate your call, Linda, as well. I mean, this is this is the traitor, Bo Bergdahl, leaves his post, wanders into Taliban ter- uh, territory, taken prisoner, held for years, exchanged for Taliban terrorists by Barack Obama, receives no prison time? Men were wounded, seriously wounded looking for him. There have been reports that six guys who went searching for him died. The judge gave him a dishonorable discharge. <sighs> Do you think MSNBC is going to care when they bring him on their program to talk about future events? No. Oh, this guy's going to be just, he's going to be a big celebrity on the left. He'll be on all the comedy shows, the late night shows. He'll write a book, make millions. The advance will be huge. They reduced him to a private. They gave him a $10,000 fine. That's it. That's it. He pl- he had already pled guilty to desertion and misbehavior before the enemy. And he gets that? It it is amazing. I I don't know about the judge. I don't know how this works. I here's John calling out of Georgia. John WCFO, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hey, Brian, I just want to make a couple of points. I'm a retired Army officer that's just absolutely furious this afternoon. Yep. Um, the, uh, the, the the caller you had earlier that tried to compare this uh, situation to uh, the, the concept of saving Private Ryan almost made me jump out of the car. Uh, because saving Private Ryan, they were trying to save the sole surviving son of a family, um, as opposed to Bo Bergdahl, who, who caused the lives of some of the sons of families. Right, um, right, and and so that's a that's a totally bogus uh, analogy. The uh, the second thing I wanted to say was that Master Sergeant Mark Allen sat in that courtroom with his traumatic brain injury and unable to speak or move or talk, with his brave wife telling the court how bad it is for him and all the the troubles that they go through, and not one word out of her mouth made a difference to that judge, not a single word. 
Um, and the other, and the final thing I want to say is, all of us who are officers or who are officers serve at the pleasure of the president. And the president, with the snap of his fingers, can have this guy out of the army. Retirements are done at the end of the month in the army. He could have him out of the army on November 30th on retirement. Good. That's what he absolutely should do. Well, you know, John, I I don't know how that world works, I, but I, I believe you. I, I believe you're absolutely correct on this. And thinking about this, you know, uh, General Kelly is... Donald Trump's right-hand man. You know, he's he's chief of staff of the White House. I'm sure that Kelly, of all people, you know, here's a, a Marine general, right? Multi-star Marine general. This is a combat man. Lost his son in battle. Has another son who is uh, currently serving. He's got his head probably just shot through the, the ceiling of the Oval Office when he heard this earlier today. Uh, Donald Trump, of course, got word when he was on Air Force One. Maybe Kelly was with him on the trip. I'm not sure how all that works. But I would hope, if what you're saying is correct, I would. I just have to believe that John Kelly has whispered in Donald Trump's ear that very fact that, sir, you can relieve this man of his judgeship right away. Do it at the end of the month. This guy's got to go. This is unbelievable. Well, you know, these Navy captains have been relieved where their ships are running into each other out there in the Pacific. For right. what they call lack of confidence, lack of confidence in the ability of them to do their jobs. That's what the Navy has said. The Army uses that, too. So if anybody's got any confidence in this judge left over, then they need to have their head examined because this is just absolutely beyond the pale. I mean, just stunning. All right, John. Thanks for checking in from GA. Really appreciate it. Now, you want to know how low they can go? This is the, the media. They're so I, I call them Trump wasted. They're just out of their mind with their hatred of this man. One of the bright light bulbs that we see every day with the Trump administration is Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Oh, speaking of which, you know, her dad is, uh, you know, Governor Huckabee. Savage is going to be on Huckabee's show this weekend. I just need to throw that out there. Uh, it'll be 8 o'clock Eastern, Saturday. They replay it on Sunday. And this is Mike Huckabee. Uh, it's a great show. If you thought his show on Fox was good... This show on TBN is great. It's it's really a good show. Better than the Fox show. And um, just go to TBN.org and get lo- the listing times. Find out more. But Savage is going to be on the program tomorrow. It's going to be great. He's going to be talking about the new book. Anyway, his daughter is Sarah Huckabee Sanders. She, this, this woman is sharp as a tack. And I just love it because she sits up there before that press gaggle. This is a hostile audience. Okay. They they do not like her. She represents Donald Trump, and they, whatever feelings they have for Trump, they have for her. And she turns it around and just hands it back to them, fearless. She's absolutely fearless. And it's, it's such a breath of fresh air to see these people that Trump brings up to the podium, beginning with the first guy, I can't remember his name. But uh, this guy would just turn it around, Spicer. Spicer would turn it around on them and just... Right back in their face. I love it. Combative. Oh, so now listen. Here, here, here they are. Los Angeles Times columnist Dave Horsley mocking Sanders' appearance. Says, she looks more like a slightly chunker, chunky soccer mom who organizes snacks for kids' games. They're going after her personally now. Rather than the fake eyelashes and the formal dresses she puts on for news briefings, Sanders seems as if she'd be more comfortable in sweats and running shoes, he writes. Yet even if Trump privately wishes he had a supermodel for a press secretary, he's lucky to have her. Okay, then it continues. Um, There's another guy. This is a New York Times, New York Times writer, uh, Frank Bruni. He's going after her for her southern accent. To listen to her pronounced priorities is akin to hearing air seep out of a flat tire. And she leaves half of the consonants on the curb. Oh, my goodness. You guys are so high and mighty. So they're going after her for her appearance. They're going after her for her weight. They're going after her for her southern accent. Can I just say one word? Winning. Winning. We're winning. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. a good time filling in for Dr. Savage on this, the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman here. Brian underscore Sussman on Twitter. And of course, KSFO, The Morning Show, which I host with my sidekick colleague and comedian Katie Green. Dr. Savage's flagship station. So Bergdahl avoids prison time. That's obviously the big story that got everyone fired up here on the Savage Nation. And rightly so. Notice we didn't talk about the tax deal because this thing's still got to get hashed out. Some of it I love, other parts I don't like. But, you know, aren't we all like this? We all look at our own personal bottom line. (laughs) And so I'm thinking, okay, mortgage deduction. I'm thinking how much of my um, uh, taxes can I write out from the state of California, property tax, etc. We're all looking at our bottom line. At the end of the day, I just want what's best for America. I want what's best for America. Hmm. Harvey Weinstein could face arrest. Boy, I'm so glad the lid's being blown off of Hollywood. That cesspool, so much direct there. It's about time. This is, you know what? Clean it up. That's another. You talk about swamps, right? Talk about the swamps. You're going to have all these crazy Antifa people out this weekend. Folks, don't even give them the time of day. Don't even. In the meantime, just think about this. Unemployment, lowest since 2000. Service sector hits a new record. Stock market going through the roof. That's what we're talking about. And it's always a pleasure. Don't forget, catch Michael Savage on Huckabee's show this weekend. Just go to tbn.org for your listings. Always a pleasure. Brian Sussman on this. The Savage Nation. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Zayabayem. I'm your father, Bo. Savage.